Hello viewers, it's Super GT here, and I am back in group number one in Gran Turismo Sport. So you can see here, I'm going to show you the the initial practice laps that I'm going to do because I've joined this lobby without doing a qualifying lap. So this here is all the qualifying or all the practice I have, basically. So I need to go around as quick as I can to try to learn what the hell I'm doing before we meet the LMP1 lunatics in this race around Monza. Now we all know that Monza, well we all know what it's like into turn one and to turn two and all of the turns really on any racing game, especially turn one though, it's especially chaotic. And of course, because I haven't done the qualifying, I'll be signed at the back, so that could help um, as I kind of look on at the carnage. Here we go then. Here is race number one. Now, last time out in the LMP1 races, or sorry, the Group 1 races, um, we were driving a lot of the... Well, I was driving the Bugatti, which is the v, uh, VGT car. But now it seems like most people have gone for the LMP1 Porsche 919 here, which is nice. I like... if I, I mean, I prefer to drive these cars, uh, the real-life cars. But here we go, then. So I've overtaken one person already. Started 15th out of 16. Coming to the first corner... And, well, there we go. We, we spoke about LMP1 lunatics, and it turns out that I'm that lunatic. And I felt so so guilty about punting that guy on, and I think he punted someone else as a result of my punt. So I felt so guilty and embarrassed that I had to let everyone go and go straight to the back. Now, we can try to go again properly here without punting anyone. Obviously, I was just not really concentrating enough into that first corner. I was kind of perplexed by that guy who was on the far right. This guy in the Bugatti is just going to punt someone else off. So perhaps taking a lesson from Super GT and learning quickly and punting is the way forwards. This guy is going to take Lesmo 1 about as bad as I've ever seen it. So I'm around the outside of him back into 13th position. Now this guy here, he's the one who was on the receiving end of the punt. Or, well, I punted someone else but then the other guy punted into this guy. So is he mad? Is he going to just... Well, he's not turning across, which is a good sign. Into Ascari. Someone else just goes out and gives up. And I'm up into 11th. And then up into 10th past the stationary Dutchman. So, okay. The first corner was an absolute disaster. But back up into 10th. It's unlikely I'll be able to get anything here. Uh, anything good. Mainly, the, the main thing here really is just trying to learn the track. Trying to learn the track and this car. The combination between the two. I mean, I've driven the track. You've seen it in previous videos. It is fairly new to the game, but I have driven it in Group 3. So, I know the track. I just don't know the track in this specific car. So, I'm kind of learning as I go as I go along here. Into the first chicane. Fairly conservative on the brakes there. But we're going to meet both apexes properly without punting anyone off, which is good news. This guy's very wide. And I'm going to go through into Curva Grande. So going up into ninth position. Now that was pretty much all that happened because you can see there at the top left I stayed in ninth at the end. I did slowly catch up with these people, but I did get the fastest lap of the race, which is a good sign. A 32.9. So that is promising. I did kind of learn and adapt as I went along. So we move on to the second race. Now we can see here the grid. I'm going to start seventh for this time with a 33.7. Qualifying time. So a bit further up, I don't have to start near the back. I can hopefully make her some nice inroads from here. Uh, getting the fastest lap in the previous race is a good sign. So let's see how that translates into this one. Will we be on the receiving end this time into the first corner? I was really careful this time to make sure I didn't do anything bad. Actually, yeah, I do get the punt that time. There was an Italian around the outside and on the exit, just getting on the throttle a little bit too much. Just spins the car around. I'm going to do a bunny hop over cone and then you see that as a result that one mistake and I've gone from well inside the top 10 to now 14th so two disastrous starts in a row this is not good going at the moment into the second chicane it's a chaotic one as we can see three cars there getting overtaken through ghosting so back onto to left another car very wide so that's another overtake so okay not too bad there uh, back up another four positions into 10th, but then very wide on Lesmo too. The guy behind me kind of just 
got glued to me, he just followed me wide. And that that's a common common occurrence, I think, in racing. You kind of get glued or fixated to the car in front and you just make a mistake if they make a mistake. And, uh, well, I drew him off the track with me, so at least I wasn't alone. So, through Ascari, onto the back straight, so this Italian ahead, a little bit slow off the, off the corner there. So I'm going to move to the left-hand side. I think his car, yeah, he's not using the same car. Uh, he has marginally better top end. You can see him just pulling away at the end there. And through Parabolica, I haven't taken the best line at all. I'm going to try to tuck into that slipstream as much as possible down the main straight. We're already a good, how far, 10 seconds behind the leader. There's no chance of that. There's no chance of a victory. We might as well rule that out. But in 13th, we could still get, in, uh, get inside the top 10, hopefully, into the first corner. I misjudge it completely, just pun the Italian, and somehow he just rides the contact as if it never happened. And it turned out to be quite a good move, and then you can see here, uh, that's the difference in the cars. I've definitely got the better acceleration out of the, uh, out of the slow chicane. That was a very lucky manoeuvre that I did not kill him. Kind of, it's, it's almost as if there wasn't any contact, he just didn't seem to be affected by it at all. And through here I felt a bit guilty again, I just gave him all the space in the world, get a penalty for it. Um, am I going to get a penalty for it? Because I did cut that. Yes, there we go. 1.5 seconds or so. Um, yeah, there was a bit of a guilty conscience there of... Um, well, I just completely just blitzed that other guy and then just got into the side of this guy. So I'm uh, going to give him the space and move on with the race. So into 11th, up the hill then towards the Ascari chicane. Look for the cones. There they are. There's a bit of dirt just after the cones, which is where you actually want to break through there not getting that as good as I would have liked and now he went all over the curb there I'd imagine he would have got a penalty although there's no way of really knowing so I'm going to move to the left hand side a bit of deja vu here as um, we're battling out towards the final corner Parabolica in we go fourth gear now this cog has very strange gears you do have to use quite a high gear a lot of the time I, you learn that in fours of seven or fours of six actually into the first corner then lap three now so we've got a bit of traffic up ahead couple of cars battling out a Brit, a Frenchman, Italian and then myself of course. So you see here once again the acceleration of this 919 far superior to the other Porsche. So he easily packed past him and then he's going to come back at me here with his uh, best top end speed into the second chicane hence going defensive. A little bit too quick into there actually no it's just about okay. Now the Frenchman's getting blocked off by this Brit. I'm going to go around the outside he's, I, I don't think he was quite aware of my presence there just marginally turns across and I, I lose a position to the Italian once again. Into Lesmo 2. Can we get through here okay? Bit of a bump on the back of the Italian. And we're going to search for a way past. You can see that superior acceleration once again. The Brit's going to move across. And we're going to look for the move. He's in the Mazda, is he? Yes. Into Ascari. I don't quite have the, the line there. The Brit's gone very deep. He's going to come back on him. Up. Oh, man, I've just hit him. He's come back on again. I've hit him again. It's not got... It's not got very clean here at all. It's not, well, in fact, it's got very dirty, should I say. And I've lost out massively, down into 14th. Really disappointing. And, well, my reactions, they're not, not quite on point. But through Ascari, you, you, you really want to carry as much speed through there as possible. And to have to deviate off the racing line is committing racing suicide. So, hence, I mean, hence the big load of contact through there into the first turn then final lap 14th position this is absolutely awful i need to improve a lot that guy just gives up completely he just doesn't want to be part of this at all and i don't blame him to be honest i might just do the same out of the first chicane we've got that acceleration this car seems to be really good out of the corners and a bit of overtaking prohibited someone was uh, sideways there ghosted out into the second chicane looking for the move don't quite have it so just back out last second uh, get a penalty there. The, the penalties are really strict on this track. I mean, fair enough. At least it's it's consistent. You know where to cut where, or where you, where you shouldn't cut. Um, all four wheels on that curb, and then you're going to get a penalty basically. Through here, the Frenchman just slows down in anticipation of the Brit kind of slowing down as well. And then I go into the back of him. In fact, I give him a boost of anything. I've helped the Frenchman out. But I need to try and get past this Brit, and uh, he's not really making it easy for me at all into Ascari, can I get the job done a bit of oversteer on the entry, halfway through as well, can be a tricky corner to get right, but we're through there with a marginal penalty 0.274 remaining 
Can I get rid of that and perhaps get a, uh, one of these positions? Is that going to be possible? Into the final corner. They're up the inside of each other. That sounds really rude. And I'm up the inside of this guy. Um, I kind of thought I held my line there, if I'm honest. He kind of tried to turn back across when you're normally going out to the left on the exit of Parabolica. But eventually I lose out anyway. So back down to 12th. So an absolutely disastrous couple of races there. Plenty of learning to be done. And you can see here, the guy just, just looking on in disgust. He just doesn't know what to do with his life. That's It's just the worst couple of results he's ever experienced. And he needs to get better than that. But this brings us on to my favourite part of the show. Mazda Bunny Hop of the week. Now, we're here at Sao Paulo. Just look at the car ahead. Just going to jump over a cone. Great stuff. So that was Mazda Bunny Hop of the Week. But back to the action here. I'm going to try to just, you know, sort out my sort out my lines, sort out my breaking points. Really know what I'm doing. Because when you go into the deep end, just straight into a race, you're kind of learning on the spot and it doesn't go well often. So here's the first chicane. I'm going to take it really nicely. Got to be really patient on the throttle here. Wait until you're on a straight line, then accelerate. Coming into Curva Grande, look for the dirt on the right-hand side, just after the cones. There we go. Down to third gear, first apex, second apex, perfectly done, using all the curve on the exit. Now let's mow one, look for the cones, there they are, just before the 50. A little bit wide through there, could have perhaps carried a little bit more speed through and turned in a little bit earlier. Let's mow two, again a little bit wide, so perhaps with the let's mows losing a couple of attempts. Into a scary, breaking at the end of the dirt on the right hand side. Clipping the first part nicely, along the edge of the curve on the right, and then clipping the curve on the left and then on the exit. Brilliantly done into the final corner, Parabolica. Looking for the 100 board. There it is, down into fourth gear, hugging that apex and then powering out to the left hand side on the exit for maximum speed onto the main straight. What is this going to turn out to be? 33.7 to beat. It's going to be a 33.1, so not a bad lap time at all. That's going to put us up towards the sharp end of the grid for this one. This is what really helps in this game, qualifying towards the front. Interestingly, we have a Vision Gran Turismo car in the lead, so I'm not sure how this car is going to handle. Obviously, most of the pack here choosing the 919. So he opts, he opts to go far to the right-hand side um, to prevent me getting slipstream. You can see everyone else opts to go to the left-hand side. Into the first corner then. How is this one going to go? It's a very weird-looking car, that, and I'm going to get punted. So it turns out I was the LMP1 lunatic at the beginning, but now someone else is... Getting away though, it's kind of turned out okay. Uh, so I've actually gone into the lead as a result of all of that. I don't know what happened to the other guy. Uh, I would assume he would have got punted as well and got reset. Luckily I got punted faster, and therefore I got reset faster. So if anything, if you're going to get punted wide, it's better to get punted at 2,000 miles an hour so that you get reset instantly. So that has kind of helped out massively. Up into first place. Now this is where I've really got to get away, just make the most... I mean, just do what I just did just now in the qualifying lap. Just really try to replicate that as much as possible. You find that once you're in the lead in a race and, you know, you're comfortable, there's no one right behind you, you all you've got to do is just set your qualifying pace as best as you can. Just get away from the pack. Come up into Ascari. Let's see how we do it on this lap. Quite a lot of curve through there. Just about not get a penalty there, so we're okay. And then through the exit, done it nicely. Can we get away from the pack? Looking behind, you see there that the... Um, Vision Gran Turismo guy um, so on the side of the track it looked like he got punted down the order he's at, actually in 6th place right now so that helps me out because I know that he's the fastest person in this in this race uh, by virtue of having pole position so he should be the one who should be winning the race technically now that's the end of first, the first lap coming to the second chicane then um, the second lap now uh, let's see if that gap can get any big O's hovering around about 2 seconds at the moment to a Belgian into Lesmo number one. We're going to clip the apex very nicely. I think that's about as good as I've taken it all day. How about Lesmo two? Can we match it here through there? That's about as good as you want to take Lesmos. I think I've taken that really well there. The gap actually up to 4.8 seconds. So that is really comfortable now. With only two laps remaining after that, it was fairly easy riding from there to the end. And you can see the gap went down to about 3.9. The guy did catch up slightly at the end, or 3.7 at the end. He did a good job to catch up a bit and get back up into second. But it turned out to be a Super GT victory. Not too many of those, but it's always good to get one. And there we go. Uh, th yes, my 11th win, in fact, on the game. 
So a nice little message from an Italian here. Nice to see you again. So just a shout out to this guy. It's, it's really nice to see these messages when I join the lobbies when people just recognise me. It's really nice to see that. And this is it then, the final race. So the Italian that just messaged me, he's on pole position, you can see, in the uh, 919 as well. Then we've got the same guy here, who was on pole position for the last race, just ahead of us in second. So the Italian in the lead there has kind of displaced the pair of us, and so we've moved down one position each. So let's see what we can do here from third position on the grid. I'm going to show you the entire race here, no edits at all. Let's go then. So is he going to take that uh, drastic line on the right-hand side? Not quite this time. He's not going to give me much room here. But um, just about going to tuck in. Go for that slipstream. Slipstream being crucial around Monza, of course. Into the first corner. Just waiting, anticipating that carnage. I think a couple of guys behind there did get a little bit aggressive. But we are away. And you see the acceleration difference between myself and the Peugeot here massive difference coming out of that first chicane which is of course the slowest corner on the track but once again uh, the, the top end difference uh, showing so this 919 seems to be lacking in a straight line overall but then at, on the exit of the second chicane um, he took it he, he just went in way too quick basically he got a poor exit and once again couple that with my superior acceleration go through into the lead so this can be a bit more interesting this time the guy behind he did get through to back to second and reel me in for two laps at the end of the previous race. So he is quicker. He did get a quicker qualifying lap as well. And then we have the Italian who was on pole position in third. So we have the fastest guy in third, the second fastest guy in second, and then the third fastest guy in first. So it's a weird um, analogy, a weird way that this race has kind of turned itself out very quickly. Although the Italian now has dropped down the order outside of the top eight. We look at the left hand side into parabolica a one second penalty to contend with that shouldn't be much of an issue once you go through the first chicane that should go down so we're going to take a quick look behind this so just under a second the gap is and that guy we i mean we've seen it he's got better top end speed and you see him approaching now i'm going to move to the right hand side to go defensive so basically what i'm doing there is just prolonging uh, the amount of time that he can be ahead so through here I'm going to stay ahead and then I'm going to extend that gap by accelerating away we know that I've got this superior acceleration so there we go that gap opens up once again it's going to be a, one of those yo-yo races where I just need to keep him at bay on the straight as best as I can now through this section here through the second chicane and the lesmos it should be roughly equal as we've got kind of similar cars you see they're just riding the contact on the exit I didn't take it very well at all through Lesmo 1, we got to really nail this second sector here at Monza to make sure that we get away. And basically, all I'm trying to do is get the same kind of gap as we had at the end of the first lap so that he doesn't overtake me at the start of the next lap, basically. That's the main aim here. Up into Parabolica, we've got to really nail this because he is definitely closer than he was on the previous lap. Through here, taking it really nicely, really comfortable and composed. So you see the improvement already from, from race one to race four now, or race three, I think it was a fairly solid race as well. Um, definitely learning and getting, getting to grips with the circuit and the car combination. Through Parabolica, maximizing the track width on the exit, he's definitely closer this time. He's within 0.3, there's no chance of him better keeping behind. That superior top end is gonna make short work Super GT he goes into the lead. I'm going to tuck back in, get as much slipstream as possible into the first corner, breaking where I normally break, but I just go a little bit deep. Now, that's something you really do have to um, take into account around Monza or any track, really, but especially Monza because of the slipstreaming. You're going to be going into the braking zones a bit quicker, so you need to break slightly bit earlier than you normally would. And that's the reason why I went a little bit wide there into turn number one. So, not able to make the most of the acceleration on the exit. So I'm going to stay in second position, and including the second chicane as well. So not able to get on, get beyond him out of that corner either. So you can see through here, with the medium uh, speed corners and the low end speed corners, I can keep up with him. It. It's going to be here, this kind of tra uh, this kind of corner here, or this kind of straight, where I'm really not going to be able to do much damage. Although you can see here just how powerful the slipstream is on this game. If I can get right in behind him, then I can really minimize his uh, his gains coming down the straight. 
So once again, onto the back straight. I'm going to tuck right in to make sure that he can't get away very much at all. I get a 1.5 second penalty, just cutting a little bit too much on the exit of Ascari. Into Parabolica. See here, um, he, he didn't gain too much actually. So this is promising. If I can keep quite close, I didn't take that as well as I could have done. So the gap is opening up about half a second now. So I still have to just about keep in that slipstream as much as possible. This is worth every... I mean, you're going to gain temps out as a result. And that can be crucial from the end of the race. Into the first chicane. Taking that beautifully. We're going to catch right up there. You can see there, catching, catching up a lot. And we've got the bonus of the acceleration now. Can we get back past him? It's going to be one of those weird races. But we know if I can just, if I can just keep on his tail coming out of this second chicane, I have a chance of getting past him on the exit it's about the acceleration rather than going into the corner I'm going to overtake him coming out so you see here there he goes gets a bit of a slide I'm going to get back past him so with half a lap to go I've taken the lead this is going to be really interesting now because there is still a very long straight leading up to Parabolica he, he could still get past so and of course this is a very long straight here leading up to uh, the Ascari chicane that gap has opened up he didn't take Lesmos as good as he would have liked so he's down about 0.6 seconds at the moment. He's not going to get me here. He's going to have to have a really good Parabolica, or sorry, Ascari, to get back past me. Through there, though, you can see on the way in, I cut too much. Nine second penalty. Oh, my God. Out of all the mistakes I could have made, I had to make that one, didn't I? I'm going to cover it. I'm going to go defensive, but he kind of backs off. I think he may have got a penalty as well. We've got a back marker here, which could throw a spanner in the works. Go easily around the outside of him. So all I can do here really is just slow down before the line and just get rid of that penalty. So I'm going to do it now. But then I get punted by the Spaniard back marker across the line. So I have to keep the penalty, a six second penalty. Didn't quite get it down enough. And in the end I finished third. So after all that, which could have been a victory, I go down to third position. Now obviously I, I did break on the racing line. I thought... As I looked behind there, that Spaniard, the back marker, looked like he was going into the pits. That's why I did it there. But, uh, you know, lesson learned. I suppose I should have just gone off to the left-hand side. It's really hard to say if I could have still won that race. It depends how quick that penalty would have gone down. Uh, it was interesting, uh, to say the least. But wow, there we go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed the video, as always. Do let me know your thoughts. And subscribe if you'd like to see more. Uh, and, of course, smash the like button if you did enjoy. I hope to see you in the next one, guys. As always, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Oh, yeah,